Hello and welcome back to the series on neural networks for the purposes of digital humanities. In the last video, I kind of generally introduced you to the different types of neural networks that exist, some of the main ones, and how they're kind of used to solve real world problems. In the next two videos, this one included, I'm going to be introducing you to the two main softwares or frameworks that we use for creating and implementing neural networks, or at least what we're going to use in this video series. In this series, we're using TensorFlow and Keras. And over the next two videos, you'll have a good understanding of what TensorFlow and Keras are, why I am choosing to use them for this series, and why you should consider to use them for your own. I'm also going to talk about some of the advantages and disadvantages of these two frameworks, and I'm also going to introduce you to the basic ways to install them, because there are a few tricks even if you are using pip install on Windows. Now, I am a Windows user, however, I'm going to show you where to get information on how to install these for either Linux or Mac. So let's go ahead and jump right in. We're going to deal with TensorFlow in this video. So what is TensorFlow? TensorFlow is a framework for creating and implementing neural networks in Python. TensorFlow is written in C++, so it's very fast and efficient, but it's easily accessible via other programming languages, mainly Python. And you can also access it in JavaScript, and I believe R as well. But in this series, we're going to be dealing with Python. Now, the nice thing about TensorFlow is what it's able to do is to do a lot of high-end mathematical operations with very, very limited code. In other words, people like me who are not a mathematician by trade, and that's typically true of humanists in general, can utilize higher-end mathematics to actually perform human humanities-based tasks. That's what makes TensorFlow so great. And Keras, as we're going to see in the next video, makes TensorFlow even easier to use by functioning as an API over top of it. I'm going to get to that in the next video. But for right now, let's talk about TensorFlow, what it means and why it has this name. TensorFlow is broken up into two words, Tensor and Flow. I'm going to get to Flow in just a second. Let's get to Tensor. A Tensor is essentially a mathematical... Uh, Essentially, it's a matrix of matrices, if that makes sense, mathematically. Uh, but if you're just coming to this from just Python, just think of it as a list of lists. That's not really what it is, but that's kind of what this might look like to you. Uh, essentially, tensors are collections of matrices. And in our case, in the first part of the series, it's going to be a collection of numerical uh, data that represents texts. This can also be numerical data that represents images. But what TensorFlow allows for you to do is to take this information, a tensor, and process it through a higher dimensional mathematics so that the neural network can receive a tensor and perform some kind of operations on it, some mathematical operations at each layer. We've seen this in the previous videos, and then output some kind of desired result. So that's why we call it TensorFlow. It's the flow of a tensor through mathematical operations through specifically a neural network. That's kind of a very reduced version, but one that's conceptually, I think, all you really need to know moving forward. So why are tensors useful? Well, th uh, they allow us to actually analyze large amounts of data very, very effectively by converting things like text and images to numerical, uh, numerical arrays and collections of arrays. And in order to actually look at tensors, a lot of scholars have moved away from CPU analysis to GPU analysis. So moving away from the computer processing unit to the graphics processing unit. Now, graphics processors were originally designed for, as you might guess, uh, video games. So for this series, I'm just running a rather outdated graphics card, uh, but still quite good. It's a GTX 1080, which has eight gigabytes of RAM. And I forget how many CUDA cores it has off the top of my head. Uh, but if you are just now getting into this, I would recommend trying to get your hands on an RTX 3080 or a RTX uh, 10, uh, uh, 2080. If you can find one of these, they're going to be very useful. By using the GPU as opposed to the CPU, uh, you can actually analyze and do algebra much more quickly and much more efficiently. And for this reason, uh, most researchers in machine learning and deep learning use GPU-driven analysis. Uh, one of the reasons why it's difficult to get your hands on new video cards is because of the increasing use of them both for the mining of Bitcoin and also for deep learning. So when the RTX 3080 came out just a few days ago, it immediately sold out within three seconds. So these are sometimes hard to get your hands on. If you can't find 
an RTX 3080, try to grab a 2080 or a 2080 Ti. If for the text-based stuff in this video, this card will do just fine, and you're looking to spend anywhere from $200 to $500 on a good graphics card, and anywhere from $500 to $1,500 on a great graphics card. So that's all I'm going to say about this. The reason why you would need to consider using the GPU is because the GPU can effectively analyze tensors, so it can actually process algebra much more quickly and much more efficiently than your CPU. That's why I encourage you to consider purchasing a GPU, but for the first part of the series, the text-based analysis, we won't really actually need a graphics card. One of the reasons why TensorFlow is useful is that you can very easily migrate the analysis of the data from the CPU to the GPU, meaning you can do really quick calculations through TensorFlow. So how do we install TensorFlow? Well, we go to the website and we click on, this is what it'll look like, click on up here in the top left corner, install. Once you click install, you'll have all the different operating systems that you could possibly want to install on uh, from Linux, Mac to PC. Uh, I'm on a PC, so I'm gonna be using PIP. So we click on PIP over here in the left-hand corner, and it takes us down to all these different things that we actually have to have. So you need to be running Python. This is for TensorFlow 2. You need to be running Python uh, 3.5 to 3.8. Uh, 3.8 supports requires TensorFlow 2.2 or later. And then you need to make sure that your PIP is updated to PIP 19. So go ahead and in PIP, go ahead and do PIP update and make sure that you're using PIP 19. Otherwise, you're going to run into some problems. And you can read the information that you need to uh, also on here for Mac and Linux. The other thing you're going to have to do if you are using uh, Windows is you're going to have to download and install uh, Microsoft Visual C++ Redistributable for Visual Studio 2015, 2017, and 2019. And you're going to want to click on that link and it'll take you here and you can very easily go through and download and install the exe file which will walk through and download and install all the visual studio stuff that you need for c++ for 2019. Uh, that's going to be very easy to do it's going to walk you through all the steps you absolutely have to do that otherwise tensorflow will not run you will get a series of errors the other thing you need to do is you need to make sure that you actually have a gpu that can support running TensorFlow. Otherwise, you're going to be running TensorFlow on the CPU. Now, if you don't have a graphics card that can run TensorFlow, you're perfectly fine. But one of the ways that you can check is make sure that your graphics card, if you're using NVIDIA, has CUDA. And so you can kind of go through here and look at their GPU support and just kind of go through here and see the, the general requirements for what you actually need to have and all of that. Uh, make sure that you are running updated CUDA if you're using an NVIDIA graphics card. Uh, so you can go here and just follow all these different software requirements. I'm not going to go through this step by step because there's plenty of videos out there. There are plenty of videos out there that show you and walk you through how to install TensorFlow uh, if you get into, into any kind of trouble. And one of the things that you're going to find is you might have some errors as you install it that are going to be very specific. If you run into this problem, simply copy and paste the error into Google and you will find that there is usually a Stack Overflow answer that will give you an easy solution. But because there's so many different little errors that you can run into that are PC specific, I'm not gonna go through all the different ones that might pop up. If you have a very specific question, feel free to leave a comment in the questions down or comments down below, and I'll try to provide you with an accurate answer or at least guide you in the right direction. So that's gonna be how you kind of go through and install TensorFlow, some of the main things that you actually need to have, such as the, um, the Windows uh, Visual Studio Suite. So that's going to be all for this video. In the next video, we're going to look at generally Keras and what Keras is and why it's actually useful. Uh, if you've liked this video, please like and subscribe down below. Again, visit me in the next video when we talk about Keras.